The question now becomes, we've used one specialty tool. How do we complete our little structured specification? Well, to do that, let's now assume that this information is stored nicely away as part of our cell documentation. So anybody could come back and look at the documentation of how we got here. The question becomes, what are we now missing? We have flow and boundary. We know what data file we need. And so if I was a programmer, I would know what we need. But where is my, where is my data dictionary, for example? Where is the data that I need? Well, we now correlate this to another tool. An invoice is a flow of data. In fact, if you were to look at an invoice, if you were to look at it, it would probably look like this. Invoice number, the name, the terms, and I'm only giving you a few. And then you would have perhaps the date and the amounts. That's what it would physically look like. In fact, if you were interviewing somebody and you were doing this, instead of writing things down, hopefully you would walk out of the meeting with a copy of the invoice. We have another tool which we call the data dictionary. And the data dictionary basically and very simply is a dictionary about data. Which means what we're doing is while we were doing the process, we're now going to build the data which we will eventually use to design our database systems. Let's take a look at that. Invoice is made up of what? Well, it's made up of something called an invoice number plus or concatenated an invoice name, maybe an address, plus terms, plus amount. Let's just say we had a simple invoice. So these are separate elements. The plus sign stands for concatenation, meaning that we're going to take this and bring them together. It's a string. So this is the meaning of it. It would mean that my database would have to have in accounts payable an invoice number, a name, an address, terms, and an amount. But looking at it further and breaking it down further, using functional decomposition, as I go to the right of equivalency, I find indeed I have yet another element. That invoice is not decomposed. It's really made up of a number of other smaller data elements or fields, as we would call them. And that would be invoice number, name, address, terms, and amount. So what have I discovered? I've discovered that this flow called invoice is really made up of a number of other elements when decomposed have identities themselves. And indeed, if we look at check, we'll see that many of these same elements would reappear. So instead of defining it twice, I could begin to decompose for reusability. Now, how we define invoice and name and address and terms and amount really depends heavily on the data that we're defining. If we are using it for database software, which most of the time we are, then we would define these as what we call SQL values and qualifiers. In this case, if I were to say to you that invoice number had to be a number, and it had to be 10 digits, I would say number 10. And that's just an SQL value. Name, if it was up to 35 characters, in SQL we have something called var car 2, 35. And that means it's a variable character length of up to 35. Address would normally be even decomposed further. But for the purposes of this example, I'll define it as 40. Terms, suppose it's up to two digits. It's only two digits. An amount would be number, but it might have a decimal point 
So we would define it as being, let's say, 5 comma 2, which would mean that there's two assumed decimal places. What's important is that this becomes more regulated by the database product that you're working on, although this is a pretty good example. Now, let me suggest something to you, however. Going from invoice number, invoice to number, name, address, terms, and amount, is a form of functional decomposition. We created these by first understanding the flow in the same way that we would take check and we would find some new data elements. Check number, check amount. A check amount is not necessarily the amount on an invoice. It could be a number of them. So essentially what I'm exposing you to here is the concept that everything we're building is not ambiguous, goes on the basis of decomposition, and so far now, I have two things. I have flow and boundary, but now I have a data dictionary. And there's one thing left. What I am missing at this point to fully provide a programmer with what they need is what is inside each one of these bubbles. We call that a process spec. A process specification is yet another modeling tool. And the rule we have is that every leveled diagram must end by pointing to a spec. So in this case, 1.2, let's say, S would probably say if date equals end of month, then read counts payable file and select invoices to be paid. Else, stop. Don't do the run. This would be, or while it's not an example of an entirely complete specification, shows you the logic. So now what I have is flow and boundary, the data that these processes need, and ultimately a specification that describes something about the logic. We call this pseudocode. And looking at the word, if you split it in half, code means the code, and pseudo means false. So while this is not a programming language, it uses some universal terms if being a very universal term for doing a conditional statement in programming. Uh, and while there is much more to these topics, this is essentially providing you with an introduction to how it works.